Yar! Enter the perilous paradise of skull and bones as you overcome the odds and rise from an outcast to infamous pirate. Or so claims the landing page for this Ubisoft game's website. Well, all except for the Yar thing, that was just some piratey flavor of my own. It felt right. I don't regret my decision. Yar. Hello again, I am Blunty, and four years ago, in 2018, at E3, I got to go into a tiny little back room at Ubisoft's off-site media booth and actually play half an hour of a pre-alpha version of Skull and Bones, in full PvP multiplayer against a bunch of other media slash influencers slash dumbass YouTuber types. And what I recorded on that day is indeed most of the gameplay you'll be seeing in this video. And this is the very first time I've even looked at that footage since I originally recorded it, in fact. Because back then, at E3, I decided not to immediately make a hands-on impression video or something for this, as I was doing for a lot of other stuff. Because there was, there was just other higher priority videos I wanted to work on first. And my plan was to just hold on to my gameplay footage for this for a little longer and use it on one of the subsequent waves of Ubi's inevitable marketing pushes and as the actual launch got closer. However, things for the game's marketing went pretty quiet for a while after that. Whereas the game was originally slated to be released in late 2018, it had already been delayed into 2019. Then, barely 11 months after my E3 gameplay experience, an ominous announcement on their Twitter came. We're going to batten down the hatches and push back on the game's arrival. This is a challenging news for us all, but it's what's needed to make Skull and Bones as awesome as it can be. Yar. Now, this kind of wording, without any sign of an actual newly set date or even release window, not even a quarter or a season or a year being mentioned, especially after a couple of delays have already happened, well, it's usually a sign of development hell, and more often than not, it's basically a soft way of saying, well, you know, you can, you can stop waiting for this game, it's basically cancelled, it's dead, and it just doesn't know it yet. We're going to potter along until, you know, the budget is dried up and the veteran high-level employees can be moved into other projects, and then we're going to tell all the, the scrubs to piss off and find a new work. It happens a lot in this industry. Honestly, I'd expected and assumed the game was just, in fact, dead at this point and never to be heard from again. And that was the assumption most people who are familiar with this kind of stench, this kind of PR wording, also made. But I was wrong. It's not dead. It's still coming, and it's coming soon, as a matter of fact. But let's roll back the clock a little bit first and then and trace over some of the history of this game. Skull and Bones began life in 2013, after the well-received ship-to-ship combat mechanics in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Ubisoft decided to create an expansion to AC4, one that much more heavily focused on this popular naval combat mechanic. But as development dragged on, it was then decided that the concept was robust enough to stand on its own two feet as its own game, one that they could presumably charge full price for and not sell as a DLC pack at a lower price. And then it morphed into an MMO spin-off for Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and it was to be called Black Flag Infinite. Later still, it would drop its Assassin's Creed branding and trappings altogether and was spun off as an independent entity with its own identity, one that we came to know as Skull and Bones. And this is just the absolute surface level stuff of its development history. Under the hood, behind the closed doors as it were, the game has apparently undergone Massive shifts in focus, in gameplay style, in settings, in scope, and just continuously setting fire to big piles of money the entire time, exceeding budget after budget after budget and being reset and having new people come in and out and oh, it's just, just, just the worst kind of nightmare development hell. At one point, it's reported that it was even spending time as a largely land-based survival crafting game, much like Rust of all things. And then, finally being initially revealed and teased at E3 2017, and then in 2018's E3, in a playable pre-alpha form that invited media and influencers could play. 
which of course brings us all the way back to where we started in this video. But a couple of years after that E3, and I missed it at the time, as Skull and Bones had just fallen entirely off my radar, because as I said, I just, I assumed it was dead and gone. I'm just going to drain away in the memories of video game history. But back in September 2020, there was an Ubisoft news update thanking whatever eager fans remained at that point for their tremendous patience and stating that production on Skull and Bones has been indeed in full swing this entire time, but with yet another new vision. And then, more than a year and a half after that, and three months ago relative to this video, a tweet from the official Skull and Bones account was retweeted into my timeline by the Ubisoft Australia team. It was a 10 second video of a ship accompanied only by the words, keep your eyes on the horizon. I quote tweeted it myself and honestly and earnestly shocked that the thing was still alive at all, much less still being promised to come. And it left me wondering, of course, if I still had that old gameplay footage from E3 2018, which obviously, yes, I do because you've been watching it. I did manage to find it, barely. It took some hoop jumping to rescue the footage, as a matter of fact, as the old drive it was on was starting to fail. It was... Quite a pain in the ass to get at this footage actually. But after all that, here we are. As it stands today, Skull and Bones has a new release date, and judging by the acceleration of the Ubisoft media and PR machine, I think they're actually expecting to reach this one. Probably without any more delays. Probably. It will, allegedly, be in full release on November 8th this year. That's only 15 weeks away, as a matter of fact. And it will be, as is common with Ubisoft games these days, released across all major platforms, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and on PC via Epic Games and Ubisoft Connect, and even, rather hilariously, Stadia, which is apparently still a thing Google hasn't completely abandoned yet, like they do with basically every other side project they ever do, and why you should never ever touch Stadia, because it will be abandoned eventually, because that's just what Google does. If you have invested any time or energy or money in Stadia, you're a moron. And what's more, Ubisoft have confirmed that full cross-platform cross-play will be supported at launch, extending across PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and Stadia. And should by some unusual miracle the game be so amazing you decide to own it on multiple platforms, it even has cross-progression, so your saves will come with you across platforms. The Skull and Bones you will get to play still has some memories from the pre alpha form I first tasted and the one you've been looking at. It is still heavily focused on ship-to-ship -ship and general naval combat, it is still designed with multiplayer in mind, and it is still pirate-themed. A lot else has changed though, not just visually, as the engine it's running on has grown up, or the UI has been tweaked or whatever, but of course, when I played it, it was barely more than a polished up proof of concept. The combat mechanics were all there, it actually looked and in fact ran really quite nicely. It was indeed genuinely fun to play, in fact. But there was, of course, no story, no characters, no progression, no upgrade system, nothing at all like that. It was purely the naval combat experience. We had three ship presets to choose from with predictable enough you know, class type focuses. The Black Horn, a charging rammer and all rounder when it came to firepower, maneuverability and acceleration with close and near range weapons. So a, a melee fighter class, essentially. Then there was the Jaeger, a nimble and fast pursuit ship with bow mounted cannons to keep your attack profile narrow as you go in head first for the kill. Something like a, a rogue or fighter class, I guess. And then the slow and heavy hitting Royal Fortune. Heavily reinforced, its speciality was anchoring in place for a heavy barrage of broadside attacks. So, your tank class, basically. The 2022 mutation of Skull and Bones that the world will see, though, has expanded massively on all of this. There's a progression line, of course. You start out small, an outcast. You snatch up a tiny and shit boat with an intent to become the biggest badass pirate the Indian Ocean has ever seen. You roam and loot and pillage what you can and gradually move into crafting bigger and better ships and weapons and upgrade them to your liking, along with crafting support consumables like provisions and ammo to keep your crew fed and happy and your guns ready to demolish the enemy. 
and it seems your ships will be, in fact, highly customizable as opposed to the presets that I get to play with. And being an Ubisoft game, you can probably count on a well-stocked microtransaction store with all kinds of time savers and currency packs and somewhat less cancers, probably some cosmetics as well, of course. Probably stuff like know, fancy sail designs, ship figureheads, logos for your flag and paint jobs and the like. You'll do your upgrading and crafting in hub towns on land, presumably, much like an MMO, these will be safe zones, free from combat with other players, but you can interact with other people here as well. Build alliances or just, you know, emote at them. Now, I don't think Skull and Bones is a full-on and proper MMO in the sense that most MMO purists would call it, or indeed, as it spent a little time early in its development being, an MMO Assassin's Creed 4 spin-off, but Ubisoft have stated that it is a multiplayer-first focused title, though it does have some solo play opportunities as well. Your core player progression is based on cold hard cash, booty, doubloons, earned from completing contracted jobs, doing raids or cargo runs, and from plundering outposts and settlements and other ships, of course. And if a lot of this is starting to sound like a much less goofy cartoon version of Microsoft's own console and PC exclusive, Sea of Thieves, then you're not alone in drawing that comparison. It shares a lot with Sea of Thieves, except it's not a platform exclusive. It takes itself much more seriously. It will probably have a much deeper customization system, a lot less, um, uh, let's call it personality, which means stupid goofy shit like banana swords and banana guns probably won't be a thing in Skull and Bones, and you probably won't find many zombies and skeletons because melee combat just doesn't seem to be a thing this game even has for a start, never mind the more grounded and less cartoony clownish world setting in the first place. Now, Skull and Bones is also not a typical Ubisoft open world game in that it's not narrative driven. It doesn't have sort of a core story that you'll walk through. It is in fact a live service game. And on that question of single player versus multiplayer, they've said in interviews, we want players to have advantages when they group up and pirate together. You can definitely play alone, but a part of the risk in our world is that if you are the lone wolf, you could potentially become prey for other players. So what it sounds like is it's permanently PvP, not opt-in PvP as some people might prefer. I tend to prefer games that are PvE with optional PvP, but you know, we'll see how things shake down as we learn more about the game leading up to launch. There's a leveling system called Infamy, so the higher your level, the higher your Infamy, the more missions and such will open up to you, and with that comes difficulty scaling of course. And there's a lot left from when the game spent time as a survival crafting title somewhere in its development hell cycle. You can hunt animals, for example, for meat and skins. You can harvest trees for wood. You can harvest the land for metals and that kind of thing for crafting your ships and your ammo and your whatnot. But I wouldn't expect much, if any, Assassin's Creed-like on-foot exploration or indeed combat, which is a sticking point for many who have been following this game since it was an Assassin's Creed spin-off still, because they considered the person-to-person -person combat and melee combat, the boarding mechanics in AC4, to be one of the better things about it. And this game apparently doesn't have that at all. But I think that's actually a good thing. It's fine. Let it have its own identity. There's no shortage of Assassin's Creed games if that's what you want to play. They're out there. There's dozens of them, I think. Let Skull and Bones be its own beast. I think it's certainly earned its own identity through its nightmarish development slog. Now, I'm not entirely convinced it will be a game for me, but I'm intrigued enough that I will be giving it a go, which, for the curious, they will be doing live testing events leading up to launch, and it will be happening across all three platforms that matter, so, you know, not Stadia. You can sign up now on the website for a chance to dive in and get a taste before launch. I'm interested in seeing if this game's nightmare progression from AC4 DLC through fully nine years of development hell being rejigged, rebooted, reset, changed, altered, mutated, bastardized, and jeebus god knows all what else, is actually going to deliver a game that feels anywhere close to cohesive instead of a big pile of mismatched parts left over from its Frankenstein's monster history of development. It's also an Ubisoft game, so chances are high. It'll feel a little bit generic a lot of the time. It'll be stuffed with microtransaction BS. It'll do a few things amazingly well and everything else just kind of by the numbers and generic. And we'll probably hear more stories about how horrifically bad they treat their employees and how just seriously bad the development cycle even was. So there's all that to look forward to as well.
Oh, and it's also releasing one day away from God of War Ragnarok, which will almost certainly soak up most of the headlines in the press. Oh, and it's also a couple of weeks before Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, so they'll be absorbing a lot of the press around that time as well. And of course, my personal interest being a huge Pokemon fan. In any case, you made it to the end, and there is a very loud truck outside revving its engine and reversing and probably about to start up some garbage compacting or something. So I'm going to end the video here because I don't have time to re-record any of this. So I'm guessing you're at least curious too because you did make it to the end of the video. So let me know what you're thinking in the down below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you as always to the patrons scrolling up above there. And I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.